Coming up on Bodega Baseball, we talk about baseball's new rules, which will be implemented this upcoming minor league season. Alongside my primo hermano Luis, I'm Manny Gomez. Luis, what's up, my man? Things are good, Manny. We're about two weeks away, I think, from uh, real baseball being yeah. recorded in the record books. All right. Today, we're going to talk about some of the experimental playing rules that Major League Baseball is going to be uh, putting into play for the 2021 minor league season. Let's do it. So the first one, and this is the one that, that, I'm, that I was just talking about, is, is the larger bases. So in this season, for, the, for AAA only, I believe, they're going to, in order to reduce player injuries and collisions, they're going to increase the size of first, second, and third base from 15 inches square to 18 inches square. And uh, some of the things that they've, they've, they are predicting will happen is that stolen bases will increase and uh, batters will reach safely to first base, second base, third base more with more frequency and we'll see more bunt attempts. We'll see less injuries. Before I saw this rule, what I thought baseball should have done was implement kind of like that softball rule. Like you have that orange base that you can step on. You know what I mean? Like they just yeah. expand, expand it into foul territory so the runner doesn't have to coll collide with the, with the fielder. I feel like they're doing it on purpose this way, and it's to, to increase all these other things, to increase stolen bases, increase bunting, increase that, part, that portion of the game on top of injuries and I, I have to be honest man i kind of like this rule i don't have a problem yeah. with it i'm okay with this rule especially like 15 to 18 inches isn't gonna have like a factor of like times 10 increase in right? stolen bases yeah uh, i have crunched the numbers did my calculations you know <laughs> I think three inches don't matter is what you're saying huh I, it matters because baseball is a game of uh you know inches mm. as the old timers would say but, you know, I'm, I'm happy it's not an orange base scenario because I think orange on a baseball field is just ugly. <laughs> <laughs> like, the they, Mets, yeah, the Orioles, right. come on, man. <laughs> like, that's just, <laughs> that, that, color uh, that color doesn't belong on a baseball field. I really hope baseball never does what the NBA is doing where they're, like, swapping jersey colors every night. Some of these jerseys this? are ugly in the NBA, man. No, I, I saw a game. It was like the Lakers versus the Nets. The Nets were wearing like yellow the, or blue, and the or the Lakers were wearing blue, and the Nets were wearing like yellow. It was it was it was like off. It was really off. Yeah. But not to get off topic. I'm yeah. a fan of this rule. But okay, yeah. So I I like it too. And and um, the one thing that I'm concerned about is how is it going to impact the game overall? Like I have a feeling because if you think about it, the whole 90 feet scenario for baseball is almost like too perfect because how many times do you see bang bang plays right now all those bang bang plays are essentially safe for the for the runner so we're gonna see essentially we'll probably see batting averages increase we're gonna see um fielders try to rush maybe we'll see more more incredible fielding maybe guys won't won't take their time so much anymore um but we're gonna see probably gonna see Pitchers ERAs skyrocket, pitchers whips skyrocket, um, stuff like that. I'm not a big fan of, but if the purpose is to increase the the action on the field, then I think this will accomplish that for sure. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'll have to see what happens. But I'm just finding it. It's hard to imagine like how many more bang bang plays are going to be safe. Like I feel like that that foot's getting on that bag. Uh, it's never like just the edge of the bat when they're getting to the bag, so they were getting there anyways, kind of thing. But I, I think the best thing about this rule, and I think the, the biggest reason is just to imp like you know, limit uh, collision on the base or like when a runner hits a first baseman's calf muscle or like yeah. ankle or something. I think that's like the biggest reason for this, and, th and I think that's why I'm, I'm just I'm good with this rule all around so far. I guess one one thing that it, it could also impact is like when the ball hits the the base, and it's an it's an automatic hit. It's like fair, mm -hmm. as it has more space to do that. So, I I wonder how this is going to impact analytics. Like, what are going to be the new numbers that we're going to start looking at? 
to really as, evaluate players, right? As far as like, uh, as because far bunt- as like how bunting is bunt- a no no. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. don't bunt if you're in, if you're into analytics. Um, you don't steal bases if you're into analytics. This will, I think, this will increase stolen bases as well because if you're reducing the space from fifty from by three inches square. How many bang bang plays have we seen at second for a stolen base? Too, you know what I mean. I think guys, yeah. I think coaches, managers, teams will be more willing to send a guy to take second base moving forward. So, do you think that? So, you you believe that this is going to have like a a significant increase overall because of all the little things it does, like stolen base, bunting, yeah. extra hits, yeah, uh, all that stuff. Just based off this increase, fifteen to eighteen inches. I don't think it's going to have a significant increase. I I see I feel like we will see an increase of some sort, but I think if they were to go ahead and say, you know, 18 inches didn't do it for us, man. We're going <laughs> we're going the full 24. <laughs> then I think we're talking about like a significant if change. we were if we were ballsy gentlemen here with a, mm-hmm. you know, with a real set, you know what I mean? We would get on <laughs> baseball savant we would calculate like i don't even know how you would do this but i'm sure there's there's enough numbers out there to figure out how many times a guy would have been safe last year had that number been reduced and that would mm. be an interesting thing to do want some homework yeah it'd be it'd be interesting it'd be interesting if you could have like a slider and go from like all the different base sizes and then yeah. also test it out which they're probably honestly mlb i'm pretty sure they're paying their data scientists I'm pretty sure they're ba- they're paying for their graph technologies. They've probably been doing this all different scenarios. I mean, why wouldn't you if you're your only competition competition like truth? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Next <sighs> one in double A defensive positioning. The defensive team. I'm just gonna read it. The defensive team must have a minimum of four players on the infield, each of whom must have both feet completely in front of the outer boundary of the infield dirt. Depending on the prelim- preliminary results of this experimental rule change, MLB may require two infielders to be positioned entirely on each side of second base in the second half of the double-A season. These restrictions on defensive positioning are intended to increase the batting average on balls in play. We talked about this before, like kind of drawing a line straight down the middle of the field and keeping two on one side, two on the other side at least. Mm-hmm. They're, they're not even implementing that yet. They're going to see how this first rule works and then implement that if, if they feel it's necessary. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about requiring your infielders to stay inside of the infield dirt. Um, I think I'm okay with a first baseman or a second baseman if they want to implement. I guess what I want to say is I like better drawing a line right down the middle of the field, two on each side, and then the second baseman and the first baseman on their side of the field could move wherever they want. Like if if the second baseman wants to shift toward the first baseline a little more and go a little further back into the outfield grass. I'm okay with that. I, I don't have a problem with that, but I guess let's see what happens here. Yeah. Um, I think I would like your version of a limit on the shift better than this one, but this is like a start. If you're someone that is pro banning the shift, this is like mm-hmm. a start, right? Like who was the guy last year? Was it Joey Gallo or like the year before where they had like everybody Joey in the Gallo. outfield? Yeah. Was, everybody everybody in, on everybody's in right field or something. Yeah, it was something crazy. Uh but honestly, like I don't know how I feel about lim- you know uh limiting the shift or changing how managers decide to use the shift. Like if I'm thinking if as a just strictly baseball, I don't like it. I feel like we're adding an element. We're taking away an element to the game that has been, you know, could have been used all these years. The game's been around for like 150 something years, whatever. But then when I compare it to other sports, I'm like, it almost makes sense that we do have limitations on certain things. Like, you know, in basketball, you can't have your back turned to the basket for like more than three seconds or something. You know, some the rules that they put in place for Wilt Chamberlain, let's say, right? Like the five then, second like, you rule, at, like you can't be in the yeah, paint for five seconds or something. Yeah. Or you, or, you know, you can't, yeah, you can't be in the paint longer than five seconds, whatever. Or like, if you look at football, you know, not everyone can block or they can block, but they can't go out for a, for a pass or something. So there's like limitations on field and maybe it's, maybe it's better for baseball. It will increase offense, obviously. Uh, So maybe it is better for the sport, but as a baseball fan, I kind of don't like starting to limit things like this. 
I feel like I feel like this is a, a direct result of analytics because it's even happening in, in basketball now too. Like Adam Silver was on the Michael K show last week, and Michael K had an idea about eliminating the corner shot, the corner three, making that like the line starts a little bit further up the three point line and expands. Like you're moving, you're you're increasing the size of the arch mm. so that there is no three point shot on the on the corners and the top of the arch is almost at half court. Like it's, it's pushed further back so that, you know, cause everybody can hit a three now, essentially. So you're making that shot harder for guys like Stephen, uh, Stephen Curry, Stephen Curry. Wow. Stephen Curry and, uh, mm-hmm. guys like that and, and Lillard and stuff like that. And, uh, Adam Silver was open to it. And he was like, you know, rules in basketball. We're not as married to our rules as, as a game like baseball. And, I guess the point that I'm trying to make is that the three point shot has become easier because analytics have told basketball teams that the most efficient way to, to score points is to keep chucking threes. You know what I mean? So I feel like if it wasn't for analytics, these, these experimental rules wouldn't even be a thing because you would just let the players figure it out. The players would, would figure out they're shifting on me. Let me learn how to hit, hit oppo. But instead now they're saying, no, I'm just going to keep hitting because if I keep hitting home runs, I'm good. The shift doesn't even matter if I'm going over the fence. But and what, yeah, what would have banning the corner three have done? I'm interested in like what what would I think it's a shorter distance th- to the basket, so it's easier to hit. I thought I thought a three pointer. Okay, it makes sense. It's not all the same distance, but I thought it was pretty much all the same distance. Like off by what, like five inches or something? Okay, it's shorter. If that's the case. That's what they say. Short inches. Uh, five inches is shorter. A lot of people like it bigger, man. They they just want a bigger arch. You know what I mean? I don't know, man. Like I said, <laughs> just to bring this back to baseball before you went down your horrific rabbit hole that you love to do on this on this show, man, where you just you just take us way <laughs> off, off base. <laughs> uh, Again, like maybe baseball waited too long to do things like this. Uh and us fans are, are always going to like hold on to to the way we grew up watching baseball and not that shifting was like such a big thing when i was growing up it's 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 like a more recent thing still and they keep increasing how much they shift they shifted back in the day they just do it way more now it's just insane yeah 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 I, what i'm saying is like i don't think the big You'd have to be just like a straight pull hitter to get shifted. And now they shift like anybody. The only people that don't get shifted is like, well, like Trout. You know, That's guys like, like Judge and Stanton don't get shifted on because they hit the ball too hard. LeMay, yeah. Guys like LeMay, you don't get, don't get shifted because he can hit to all fields. And I'm just using Yankees examples here, I know. But you love the... No. Guys like David Fletcher don't, don't yeah. get shifted. Same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you, but why, why don't they just... Here's an easy solution here. Why not just move the fences back? That goes directly against more home runs, though, which is. But I feel like even with these chicks dig the long ball, man, here's the thing. And we have some more rules to get to. I don't know why I keep going off on on tangents, but that's kind of the day I'm having daylight savings. I'm tired. I didn't comb my hair. I look crazy. I'm seeing myself on the screen here. I feel like I look crazy. So I'm talking crazy. What are you going to do? Um, But I feel like a lot of these rules making the bases larger uh, defensive positioning. They're not going to change what Joey Gallo is going to do on the baseball field. He's still going to try to hit home runs. And I think that's still the problem. Um, you know what I mean? I, Justin Turner still going to try to hit home runs. Um, you know, oh, yeah. guy, these launch angle guys, their goal is let me hit as many home runs as I can. Let me put the ball in the air as much as I can. Um, what this is going to do, and I think that's a good, it, it's a good thing still, is that it's going to give guys that wouldn't have had a chance otherwise a chance to maybe make a team because they're faster so they can reach first base quicker. They're, they're going to be, you know, instead of, instead of having a 400 on base guy, I could get a guy that could hit 350. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's just as good as having a high on base guy, but it's still not going to change the guys who won't change their, their batting style. They're going to stick to, they're not going to shorten their stance or anything like that uh, in order to avoid a strikeout because they're still going to try to go for the home run. They're still going to try to go for the long ball. So why not move the fences back? I don't know, five feet or something. I'm not saying let's go polo grounds where it was like 700 dead center or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Honestly, like fences have been of all distances throughout history. So I don't really, 
I wouldn't be against that. But I mean, you know, not to go back to the the Mets and, and how much we ripped the Mets on this podcast where we used to, <laughs> you know, we're we're unbiased at this point. You know, oh, yeah, to, there's no bias here. At all. We're trying to stay right down the middle. I but, got that Mets blue on today, actually. But like, I feel like they keep trying to bring in the fences in City Field. They're not trying to move them back. Obviously, you're saying you're suggesting they move them back. I'm just saying. You move them closer in certain parks, you know, like get I think like the Tigers need to move their fences closer. Maybe I don't yeah. know. It's hard, you know, whatever. Um, But I know it's not going to it's not going to change the way Joey Gallo tries to his approaches in 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 at bats. But it will result in more more of hits, more him getting on base, you know, for all guys all over the place. Yeah. Anyone that gets shifted like this is. This is like easy. This is going to be good for them. Yeah. All right. Let's but, move on. All right, go yeah. ahead. Sorry. No, 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 sorry. My bad. My bad. I was just going to repeat exactly what I've already said about how I'm kind of 50-50 <laughs> about this, but... Sorry. To off, My bad. <laughs> All no right. Way. In high A, we got the step-off rule. So the step-off rule is that pitchers are required to disengage the rubber prior to throwing to any base with the penalty of a balk in the event uh, that the pitcher fa- fails to comply. Um... It says MLB implemented a similar similar rule in the second half of the Atlantic League season in 2019, which resulted in a significant increase in stolen base attempts and an improved success rate after the adoption of the rule. So this is like guys like Andy Pettit was was um, notorious for this move. He would stay on the rubber and throw the ball over to first and, and catch you looking almost. And he I think he led leads baseball with pickoff throws. I'm not sure all time, potentially. I don't know if that's true. I know that he had a lot of pickoff. Um, in his career. Now you have to completely disengage the rubber before you throw over to first um, or, you know, before you look the runner back or whatever. I'm okay with this. I'm cool with this move. I have no problems. I kind of do have a problem with this rule. Like, I feel like the good pitchers, I feel like your pitcher isn't credited for having like a quick delivery or anything. Like there's nothing good about that. Like, you got guys like Noah Syndergaard that, to me, they guys could run all day on them. And I feel like MLB's trending towards that where guys don't really hold runners on anymore because nobody's stealing. So why are we making it easier for them to, to steal? Or why are we making it like... And I thought there was more to this rule. Okay, that's the next thing. My bad. I'm kind, The reason why I'm picking out this step-off rule change is because I feel like it's, it wasn't like the... It wasn't like the rise of the shift that limited stolen bases. I just feel like people aren't stealing anymore because they're told not to steal. Nobody wants to give away an out. It's back to the analytics thing again. Yeah. Right. So if that's, so if, if the analytics is what's telling people not to steal, then just tell people to try to steal more. Like, right. yeah, this is, yeah, this is going to help stealing. But was the issue that it was so hard to steal and people have stopped stealing because of that? Is that, is that the reason why? Is it I think- because, Fast guys are no longer the guys you have in your lineup. Is it because the analytics are telling people not to give outs away? If that's the case, then why? You know, I don't know. Yeah, I think the analytics people, I think the reason why people don't steal anymore is is directly related to analytics. It's yeah, it's if you don't steal, if you can't steal at a rate of like 80 percent, I think is the number they don't want you to steal. So someone like Brett Gardner, for example, he's always had tremendous speed. In his entire career. And if you're a Yankees fan, you, you've always asked yourself, why doesn't this guy try to steal more bases? He never tries to steal bases. And the reason is because he's being told, don't give away an out at second. Even if you can steal at a 90% clip because you have Aaron Judge hitting after you. You have, you know, uh, in 2009, you have Alex Rodriguez hitting behind you. And that guy could hit a home run. And that's a two-run home run as opposed to a, a single shot or whatever. Um, I think that's completely related to analytics. Now, if 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 they had implemented an 18 inch uh, base in 2009, I bet you Brett Gardner would have been stealing a lot more bases because his rate would have been through the roof and they would have said, OK, it's worth it. Go for it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's directly related to analytics. And I think a lot of these rules, what they are is anti analytics. But what what baseball doesn't understand is. Analytics will always catch up. Baseball, the, the thing about baseball is that there's so many numbers and you can interpret them in so many different ways is that somebody's going to figure out how do we beat this 18-inch base or whatever. Maybe the next thing is going to be 
let's teach everybody how to bunt. Everybody lay bunts down. Let's get a, a team full of fast runners like the A's back in the 70s. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's what's going to happen. And that's fine because it, that's that's what the game is supposed to be is adjusting back and forth. It's a game of chess. But let the players do it. That's that's kind of the problem that I have here. Even though I like these rules, I, I prefer letting the players figure it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Each one of these rules makes me kind of contradict myself a little bit because I know, I'm too. not like <laughs> I'm not like yeah I'm like noticing like I pretty I pretty much just made the same argument you made for the last rule except I made it for this rule and we kind of like swap. <laughs> I I think my beef again my beef with the step off. Can we just actually let's get into the next rule? Do you mind? All if right. we just yeah yeah man. Yeah. All right man. All right. The next rule was Sorry, in man. all low all low A leagues. Pitchers will be limited to a total of two step-off rules. So not only is there the step-off rule where you have to come off completely off the rubber before you throw to any base, you're limited to two of those. And, and that includes pickoffs uh, per plate appearance while there is at least one runner on base. A pitcher may attempt a third step-off or pickoff in the same plate appearance. However, if the runner safely returns to the occupied base, the result is a, bu- is a balk. So you can try a third time. But if the runner returns safely to to his base, then the umpire calls a balk that runner can move to the to the next piece, which is kind of effed up, if you ask me. But anyway, depending on the preliminary results of this experimental rule change, MLB will consider reducing the limitations to a single step off. Oh, my God. Or pick off per plate appearance with at least one runner on base. Um, if yeah, they so- do this, we're going to have Ricky Henderson numbers again, I think, probably. Yeah. And I think that's what I'm like. First of all, I, rule changes are necessary. They happen all the time, right? We're going to repeat this like a million times throughout our lives because I think the more analytics grows, the more changes we'll see in the game, all this stuff, right? Again, I'm not, I don't have, a, I'm probably looking to this too, too much because if a pitcher's picking off, it's probably because you're one of the guys that's going to steal. So they're going to make sure to make a count, whatever. Maybe you're a guy that doesn't steal a lot. So they're not even going to bother. You'll get thrown out anyways, whatever. But what I don't like about these pickoff stuff specifically is just like, again, people didn't stop stealing because stealing became like so hard. Like, I feel like a lot of the guys that throw 99 and above all have slow deliveries, right? Mm -hmm. They're, they don't, they're not good at holding guys on anyways. And people still, you know, they do take advantage of some of these guys. But a lot of times teams aren't stealing anymore. So if that's the reason why people aren't stealing anymore, that has to change. You know, right. this is forcing it to change. This, yeah. is, this is ushering in the era of speed almost. You know what I'm saying? I think, it's I think almost, what, this is, what this is doing is it's, it's going to force people to do these things because it's, it's almost too enticing. It's almost like... yeah. It's like, uh, like I, when I was a kid, this is a really bad example, but I'm going to travel with me down this roll, uh, road, if you will. When I was a kid, um, if I wanted to go to the candy store, I could have earned my way to get a dollar so that I could go to the candy store and buy a candy. This is a really bad example. This <laughs> is almost just like just dropping the kid off at the candy store and saying, I dare you to, to get candies and not get caught or something. You know what I'm saying? Like. I know what you're saying. Do you understand? I mean, no sense. I understand you, you. You're picking up what I'm putting down here, man. Always, man. We've been doing this for a long time, and I've learned how to pick up on these things, man. You you know how to bridge the gap <laughs> between going to Target and buying all your Christmas <laughs> gifts at Target versus going to, you know, the mall to do it. You know, I, I'm there with you, man. And it, again, it's, the, it's almost just like daring you. Like, come on, man. Steal that. Please. Just take it. Please just take the base. So I don't, I don't think it's a matter of that guys aren't good enough at doing it. I think guys can get good at it. It's, it's that they're being told, don't do it because it's not worth it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so I, so I think that's my point. Like, let me see. They, they put rules around Wilt Chamberlain's game, right? Wilt Chamberlain happened to, ba- to basketball, and they were like, whoa, we got we to gotta start implementing some rules. Like, this guy's just too dominant, whatever. Bob Gibson, they added rules. They added, you know, lowered the mound, whatever. Right. So these guys kind of like Steph Curry, if they ever do start limiting something around the three pointer, it'll be because of Steph Curry. Right. Or like whatever his legacy leaves behind. It's like Tiger maybe, Woods, Tiger proofing courses and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's like maybe Steph Curry ruined the game of basketball because 
the old, you know, the old basketball fans are like, all the game is today is three pointers, whatever. So maybe his legacy would at least behind this ushering in the three point era is, is Steph Curry's doing right. In this case, it's almost like we're going to, we're, we're creating, we're forcing the next Ricky Henderson or wave of Ricky Henderson's to come here because we are officially making this part of the game. Right. And that's what I think my problem is. I think it's like, it wasn't that the game got too hard for people to steal bases. Cause I don't see that today. I, I just see people not stealing bases. Like it's yeah. the analytics again. Right. So I think that's my problem with these, this, these two rules specifically is that you're kind of just like forcing it. The other rule about increasing the base size is to me, that's more safety and it's not like the significance, but, but if you want a safety, pickoffs. if you wanted safety, you would just do first base. If we're going to go back to the beat, because when you're, when you're trying to, swipe a runner out at second base you're standing in front of the base so no matter whether it's 18 inches 25 inches six inches you know whatever whatever it is hey you know i i gotta disagree there like standing <laughs> but you're you're gonna stand in front of the base regardless so you're there if there's gonna be a collision there's gonna be a collision whether that no matter how big it is at first base that's where the difference is because you have to run in a straight line you can't try to avoid you know yeah, but there's only so much space that you have to try to avoid getting uh running into the to the fielder at second base. The fielder is going to be taught stand in front of your base and swipe down, try to catch that guy like you almost have to slide under his legs or whatever. You know what I mean? So, yeah, no, so no, I think I think for me, the reason why I think that this is forcing the issue, making guys do things, daring guys to do things is because they're making that the base rule specifically is an indicator of that for me, because I don't know. You're, I don't know you made a good about. point. You made a good point that it's more for first base, but I have to say like, if there's, if there's a bigger base for me to slide into at second, I could at least slide on a side that the, that maybe the fielder isn't standing on. And it's not always like they're standing in front of it. I think it adds safety to all bases, but you made a good point when you said, it's 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 more for first base. You're right. I do agree that it's more for first base. So you're right. It's for it's for stealing. So yeah, just add on to it. This is all like <laughs> ushering in the speed demon era. And, yeah, and it's not because like I don't know. Like if man. Ricky Henderson existed today, they probably wouldn't implement these rules. You know what I mean? Because he he was just we could, we can do an already. episode on Ricky Henderson. I think he's the greatest of all. Like literally, I think he's the greatest play, baseball player of all time. But um. It would never happen. The problem is that we don't have guys like that anymore. Who's who's the fastest guy now? I can't remember his name. We just did a we just I did a video last week. I'm gonna try to remember this off the top of my head. You could do uh, it, man. Oh man, I, there's a th somewhere in that name. There's an e. There's a last name e. I think. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, with whatever his name is, you're gonna get it while you're thinking about it. He's he's the fastest guy in baseball. He's still not like stealing bases like Ricky Henderson did yeah. because he's he's being told by somebody don't take that base if if uh, Mike Trout is hitting right now or whatever. Um, anyway, while you're looking for that name, I'm going to move on to the next rule. The next rule is uh, in the low A Southeast, in addition to the limitations on step off. So we have you have to step off the rubber entirely. You have the limitations on the step off. MLB will also expand testing of the automatic ball strike system, ABS. Excuse me. I think that's RoboUMPS. Uh, that began in the Atlantic League and Arizona Fall League to select uh, low A Southeast games to assist home plate umpires with calling balls and strikes, ensure consistent strike zone is called, and determine the optimal strike zone for the system. So the way this worked was the umpires wore something like an AirPod, and there's an automatic strike zone a robo ump and it'll tell them ball strike then the umpire calls it and if there's no call like the the system couldn't determine what it was then it's up to the umpire's discretion I, I i'm okay with this i have no problem with it i like the ump i look i like the element of the umpire and the element of the strategy that it takes you know what umpire is behind home plate so you know what pitches you have to throw on that day or whatever to 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 try to beat your opponent but if we want to, if we want all things to be equal and consistent then I think it's fair. You know what I you mean? Know, I think like when we've spoken about this in the past, I was not really in favor of this, even though maybe because people are paying more attention to it. We've seen some really horrible calls even in last season. Uh, so I was always on the, I was always on the fence about stuff like this, but I think I'd be more in favor of just investing into more training for umpires. Maybe like 
getting their eyes checked more regularly, you know, like pilots, but, 2020 vision or something. But now that now that I think about it, because gambling has become such a big part of sports now, especially in New Jersey, I think we do need some sort of automated strike system because, <clears throat> you know, that it, it's bad. It's bad when it's really bad. You know, when it's really yeah. bad, it's really, really, really bad. So I, I think I'm okay with this. And I just think of other sports. Like I think if other sports could have a way, it's not, it's not, you're comparing like apples to oranges because like the holding rule in football, like to me, there's all in, in every play there's holding. holding if they figured yeah. out, if, if they figured out a way to get a robot to cap catch this in action, there'd be holding on every play. So other sports, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work as good, but I feel like again, with gambling involved, maybe things do need to become more automated like this. Yeah. And it's it, it it's easily done. I think you always need an umpire because you always need to determine whether a runner's out or out or safe at first on a bang bang play. Did a guy did a guy tag the guy or not? You're gonna need an umpire. You're gonna need instant replay forever. In terms of a strike zone, um, there's no need for for one guy, Angel Hernandez, to have a different strike zone than some you know some yeah. other guy. Um, all right. The last one is in the, in the low A West. In addition to the limitations on step offs and pickoffs, following successful pace of game rules testing among Florida State League teams in 2019, on field timers, one in the outfield, two behind home plate between the dugouts, will be implemented to enforce time limits between delivery of pitches, inning breaks, and pitching changes. The on field timer used in low A West will include new regulations beyond the system currently used in AAA and double A to reduce game length and improved pace of play. What I find suspicious is that they're not telling us how much time is going to be used, but uh, I'm again, I'm okay with the timer. I don't know how you implement it. I don't know if, if it's like it starts once the pitcher receives the ball from the catcher, it starts and you know, you have 20 seconds to, to deliver the ball. I, I don't, I don't know how you implement it. How do you police the pitcher and the hitter at the same time? Um, but I'm okay you know, with it if, if they can figure something out. I gotta be honest, I'm okay with this rule because I feel like a time factor is what makes basketball and football mm -hmm. like that it just gives it that extra level of intensity sometimes. Um, but then just thinking of like the times I've stood on a mound on a hot day, like pitching, and it's that long inning where you're you're at 20 pitches, you only have one out. You know, it's it's kind of hard to keep delivering, if that makes sense. Like I think of like a I think of like an NFL quarterback has to throw the ball well, like every 40 seconds, let's say if, if it was like on a, on a, just like a consistent passing, but like they're hopping around, they're kind of stepping into the throw a little bit baseball. You're kind of just like, you're trying to like, just harness all that momentum into one yeah. line. And it's, I think it's going to be, I think some guys are going to get weeded out with this rule. <laughs> like yeah, some out of shape pitchers that, didn't bother to to do like cardio in the past. This might weed some guys yeah. out. For me, I think it's. I think if you eliminate, that's not true. I'm not gonna say that because some pitchers take a long time to get ready for that wind up, and it's kind of Sunny annoying. Gray. It's excessive. Yeah. I don't know. I think there has to be an agreed upon time frame, and you just stick to that. You know, you go 30 seconds. Let's say. And if the pitcher's ready and delivers the ball, it's it's against the hitter. And and if the pitcher's not ready or whatever, then it's against the pitcher. You know what? I, mean? I, mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see how it works. Um, but those are the rule changes that we're going to be seeing in the minor leagues. Um, overall, I, I'm okay with them. I, I feel like, like you said, I'm contradicting myself back and forth here. But it's I think it's necessary at this point. If we're trying to grow the game, you got you to do what you got to do. I just wonder what's going to happen if uh, – did you come up with that guy's name yet? Never looked at it because I'm recording my screen here and uh, they don't want to – Gotcha. Um, let's call him <laughs> the, guy. the guy. I got you, man. I'm, I'll get this. I'll get this before you're done. If the guy um, steals 150 bases, baseball's going to be like, all right, we got the step-off rule is just not going to work for us here. And, and, and I also – I don't want to see that. I don't want to see back and forth. I want to see – a rule change and then consistency. You know what I mean? And that's it. That's that's all I want, guys. That's all I want in life. Manny, I could not get you that that name. I'm sorry. All right, guys. 
Uh, make sure you guys drop us a rating and review on the podcast, Bodega Baseball. Subscribe on YouTube, comment, follow us on Twitter at manigo 3 at Hova Mojo. Thanks for stopping by the Bodega. Peace. Peace. Peace.